Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're gonna to be talking about lengthening cycles and a lot of evidence to support it. So yesterday I put out a video that was a little bit provocative and, and saying that, you know, I don't believe the four-year cycle theory is, is true. Um, and obviously I got a lot of flack for that. And some of it was, was reasonable because I, I more or less just pulled up TradingView and, you know, I didn't go through all the charts that I've previously gone through in a lot of my videos. And, and sometimes one of my videos will, will garnish more views than other ones. And so we have a lot of new people coming uh, to the channel and they don't know about all the other charts I've made before. So I'm making this video to go through, you know, most of the charts that I feel like support the evidence or provide the evidence that lengthening cycles are the name of the game and that the four year cycle theory is likely not true. You know, I should not say it's definitively not true because I don't know. And most everything I talk about here will be some level of extrapolation. And if you're, you know, if you're familiar, if you're in the sciences, then obviously interpolation is generally okay. Extrapolation is very dubious. So I did my PhD in, in engineering, so I have a lot of experience with this stuff. I'm not just some you know, high schooler off the street that, that is just throwing a few charts together. So please at least hear me out. Um, you know, if you if you watch the video, which is going to be a longer video than normal, if you watch the video and and you think that I've missed a key fundamental point, or you know something that you think that I I should be considering that I'm not, then let me know in the comments below. Um, if you if you guys at least appreciate a a a perspective that might be different from your own and challenge challenges one that is different from your own then if you can appreciate it then please subscribe to the channel follow along you know i will be happy if we get to the point in in a couple years and if 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 bitcoin hits this new paradigm shift i'll be happy i'll be the first to admit okay i was wrong um even if the peak occurs in say the first quarter of 2022 that's fine what's a few months among friends when we're talking about years okay so Let's follow along. I, you know, I, I ultimately think that we're going to be peak. That the next peak of Bitcoin is, is several years out, and I want to provide the evidence for it. So, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Check out this Telegram channel if you would like to discuss further. If you know, because it, it's kind of hard to, to do the to, to do all the YouTube comments and respond back and forth. But if you want to talk with me and around 2,300 other people that have joined this channel, then check this out. Um, and let's go ahead and jump in. So, in this video, we're going to cover the fair valuation of total cryptocurrency market capitalization, and I'll explain that in a minute. We're going to be looking at trends in the price action after the halving, followed by logarithmic regression fit to non-bubble data. We'll talk about that. We're going to look at the number of price changes at each paradigm shift, the running return on investment, moving average derivatives, the doubling time bands, so the, the time it takes to double, and we're going to look at the, the development of those bands over time, and also fundamental reasons. Uh, and this includes, obviously, the coronavirus, COVID-19, which has clearly sh uh, sent shockwaves through our financial system. Um, it, I mean, it sent shockwaves through, through, every, you know, through everyone's household, through industries everywhere, and we're going to talk about that, its effect on stocks, and the fact that we've seen stocks go down 35% in a month. And also, we have, we're going to talk a little bit about oil because, you know, when oil prices are crashing, it's generally not a good sign. Um, and we're going to talk about that. So we're going to go through all these reasons, and, and this will be one video that is going to cover everything so that in the future, when someone asks me, you know, in the future, when I post a video about, about lengthening cycles versus four-year cycle, and someone says, oh, well, you, did you consider this? I can say, okay, here's the video. You go watch that. Because as it stands, when someone challenges me, I have to send them, like, a report and then four videos. And who's got time for that? So let's just make one video, and, and you can share this with your friends, see what they think. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we're going to talk about, and I'm not sure if I've, I've really spoken much about this graph before, so if you haven't seen it before, then um, uh, I want you to pay attention to what it's doing. So we're, we're trying to get a fair valuation of Bitcoin, um, or sorry, the, the total cryptocurrency market cap, not Bitcoin. So before, you know, sometime over here, it's obviously only including the market cap of Bitcoin because other coins didn't exist. 
But at some point, you know, it transitions to the total market cap and, and as other coins come on, it's including all new coins. So this is daily granulated data of the total cryptocurrency market cap since July 2010 to present day. And what I've done is I've, I've fit a curve to, to try to basically get the, the best valuation of Bitcoin. And, and the, way that I, the way that I did this was it was looking at and more or less the error between the points and the trend line, um, the log of them, okay, looking at the relative error there, and then summing the error up and optimizing it in a, in a, in a solver to try to find the minimum. So this gives you the, the best fit. And this is, you know, this can be updated constantly to, to further tweak it as we go on in time. And if you look at it, you know, you can see that the, 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 the trend line, the red line, which is considered the, the fair valuation trend, is, you know, it, it's got a lot, of a lot of data below it, a lot of data above it. Um, and, you know, you can see that through time, it, it seems to be a reasonable fit to a fair valuation. And we've provided these green dash lines, which are basically the, the you know the, the the low and the, the the high, the min and the max. And the reason I use these is so we can better identify a bubble phase, a speculative bubble. And if we look at this, you can see that you know in the last market cycle we got down to the to the bottom of this band, but we didn't really get down to it earlier this year. And, and the reason wasn't because the price didn't go low enough. I mean, obviously that was part of the reason, but it was just because it, it happened too soon. And, and so you can see that despite the fact that prices are, are higher now than what they were um, uh, back in, you know, back a year and a half ago or so, we're now getting to the bottom of the band because overall the, 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 the regression line is, is increasing monotonically. So if we were to repeat the last cycle, then we would expect to be somewhere, you know, down in this region for an extended period of time. We could be in this region for a couple of years and, and, you know, still get back to the, to the previous all-time high Bitcoin. Remember, this is total market capitalization um, just because in, it, it's increasing in general. So remember that. And then we would want to ultimately see a move back to the top of this band here and then maybe a blow off top or speculative bubble several years from now. Okay, now why is this important? Well, if we if we look at the valuation versus the trend line, so 100% is the fair value, and we're basically saying if it's undervalued or overvalued. So if it's undervalued, it's below the red line. If it's overvalued, it's above the red line. So you can see it over here, and you know we have time and we have the the percentage of basically the valuation. And if we were to if we were to to look at where the speculative bubble top occurred, we're going to draw an imaginary line that doesn't mean a thing, okay? Does not mean a thing. It can, we can easily go above it. We may never hit it again. But if we just look at the trends, we can see that each cycle, the speculative bubble top is getting, not only is it coming down, but the time between each one is getting longer, okay? So if we were to project out a future cycle, based on what we've seen so far, we might expect to spend a while in the, uh, in the, under in the undervaluation phase of the, of the fair um, value logarithmic regression line. We would expect to spend a decent amount of time below this line. So, and then at some point we would, we would wanna go back above it, meaning we get above 100%, and then we would see a blow off top that would ultimately culminate in you know, greed and mania Dumb money is going to pour into the market. Smart money is going to be exiting the market. We're going to rinse and repeat. And then if, if, this, if this does prove true, then the next cycle is probably not going to happen for many years. Like we might be talking seven years or eight years or something. Um, so consider this a potential opportunity, not that this is financial advice, but to, to, you know, to continue to enter the market slowly because at some point in the next few years, I think the evidence strongly suggests we will see a, a blow off top. I just think it's going to happen later than what most people think. So if we were to, if we were to compare this back over here, you can see that this peak here at 2000% overvaluation corresponds here. The next one is around 1600% overvaluation, which is this one over the, over the, 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 
fair valuation trend line. The next one is 1,000%. So we would expect this to continue coming down. So this covers the, the total cryptocurrency market, like the fair valuation. Ultimately, I think you know Bitcoin is going to get to around six figures in the next cycle. I just think it's going to take longer to get there. Now, let's look at the, the days since the halving. So the number of days since each halving and what story does it tell? And this is, these are all updated graphs. So if you've seen these videos before where I cover this stuff, note that everything in the video is updated except for maybe one chart at the very end I didn't update. So the first cycle, so the, or sorry, the first halving, if we look at the price of Bitcoin, the ROI, I should say, since the first halving, so this is not since the bottom. It's not since the market cycle bottom. It's just since the halving. We have graphs on, on ROI from market cycle bottom, but I thought it would be a little redundant to also put this, that in the same video because it's basically the same thing, and I just published a video on that about two or three days ago. So go check that out. But this is the ROI from the halving, and you can see that you know from the first halving, we saw a, a blow off top pretty early on, and then we had a second one. Um, and, and basically this line here corresponds to the price at which the previous all-time high was at. So it took us you know, almost 100 days, maybe 80 or 90 days to get to the previous all-time high. Um, but no, this is ROI, but it corresponded to the previous all-time high. So it took about 80 to 90 days. The second cycle, you can see it looked like this, and this was starting from the halving in 2016, you know, out until um, the blow-off top in, in 2017. So you can see here, we this was our, our previous all-time high line. So the first time, it took around 80 to 90 days to get to it. The second time, it took around 250 days to get to it, okay? And, and that's why the third time around, I think it's going to take a significantly longer period of time to get back to $20,000. And I've, I've been saying this in 2019, I've been saying it in 2020, I don't think we're going to get to 20000 this year. If we do, I would love it. I'll be the first to say, you know, it, obviously the math on that um, was a, bit, a little bit misleading, but using the data that I have, which is all I can really do, is, it, you know, it would suggest that getting to the next, uh, getting to our previous all-time high of $20,000, it might take, you know, over a year after the halving. You know, it could, I, it could take a year and a half. It, you know, it might not happen until the end of 2021 or maybe even 2022 for all we know. Um, if it happens before that, great. I would love it if we could all cash in in 2021 and call it a day and, and sell everything at the peak, wait out the bear market, reinvest in 2022, and then wait for another bull run in 2020, 2025. That would be great. Let's let's all hope for that together. But let's be prepared for the fact that that might not happen. Um, so if this is the case, then the next the next um, the next time that Bitcoin would realistically reach twenty thousand dollars would not be for at least a year after the halving. Um, that's what I think this data suggests. Now this is this is the same graph, but we're also adding on the um, the the bear market after the peak. So you can you can kind of see the difference here. Um, you can note that one of the differences between the first cycle and the second from the halvings is that here we were, you know, in the last time we were really starting to increase into the halving, whereas this time it, it more so seems like we're decreasing into the halving. Um, and and you, could, you could even draw, say, like a trend line from the bottom to the present day, bottom to the present day, um, and uh, and, and obviously we can do this because the, these, this graph is going to be soon out, soon to be outdated because it's just a, you know in, a, in May or so we're going to have the next halving and we're going to start a new curve. Okay, so I would expect not really a whole lot to change here. Um, but you can also see that again this goes with the idea that not only are we going to see lengthening cycles but we're going to see diminishing returns. You can see the returns how they're diminishing each each cycle. So I would expect the next cycle to, to not go nearly as high in terms of the ROI from the halving. Here is a logarithmic regression fit of non-bubble data. So this is, if you want to create this yourself, it's very simple. Go download the price data of Bitcoin, um, create an equation that is y equals 10 raised to the, to the a times ln of x minus b where x is time and a are fitted coefficients and just fit it to non-bubble data 
If you think that the data I chose is, is not that great, then you can choose different data and you can fit it. And all I did was I added an uncertainty band here to say, in general, if you're investing when we're in this band, you're, you're doing something right if you look at the macro picture. If you're investing outside this band, you're, you're looking at it more for a, a, a huge speculative gamble um, that it's going to keep going up. And you can even see that in, in 2019, we, we went out of the band and we quickly came back in and now we're at, the, we're at the bottom of it, which is where we were for a long time in 2015 and 2016. Even though price was increasing, we can continue to increase the price and still remain in the, in the lower half of the band. If we were to draw this out for, for a couple decades and, and just draw some trends here, drawing it from the, the bottom of that cycle to the peak, the bottom to the peak, bottom to the peak, you can see that we're getting lower and lower on the curves. If we were to project out a different one, I think it would look something like that. And then if we were to draw out a future, you know, cycle, a theoretical cycle, I think it would look something like this. And it would have Bitcoin going over $100,000, but not until, you know, 2023 or, you know, thereabouts. 2023 plus or minus six months, plus or minus a year, something like that. Um, if we were to peak in 2021, then, you know, the, the price, if we were to continue this, this um, you know, decreasing angle, basically, the price would probably end up peaking at like thirty dollars or $40,000 if it were to happen in 2021. So if we were to see a, you know, a mania fuel bubble phase in 2021, I would be much more cautious about its, um, about its you know, um, cap that it could hit because I feel like it would be too soon. What we really would want to do is to slowly, you know, more slowly build up and then only at the very end have a blow off top to, you know, maybe over $100,000 and then to come back down into the maybe thirty dollars to $50,000 range somewhere in there. And then to continue our cycle, you know, just keep spinning our wheels for another six years or so um, and, 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 and rinse and repeat and, and continue, continue that. So here, you know, I, this, is not, this is not the graph that you really should take to the bank and say, okay, well, this is the reason, but um, I, I just like to put this on here. So this is the number of times that the Bitcoin, that Bitcoin the price of Bitcoin has, call, has crossed various milestones. So essentially like new paradigm shifts, if you will. So the first time it, cro or the number of times it crossed um, uh, 10 cents was three. Okay, and this is daily granulated data. I'm sure if you were to look at minute data, it would have crossed it a thousand times or something. Sorry about that. There was some noise outside, but um, anyways, the, you know, this should not be taken to the bank as something that is definitive. But if you just look at the number of times that Bitcoin has crossed a certain price um, at these, you know, you could say these paradigm shifts in the in the market value of Bitcoin. Uh, so we have 10 cents, it crossed it three times, granulated daily at $1, crossed it four, at $10, four, at $100, it crossed it seven times, at $1,000, it crossed it eight times, and at $10,000, it's so far crossed it 12 times. So we would expect, if this trend continues, that if we were to ever get to 100,000, we would expect to cross that several times. And obviously, you could say, well, maybe there was one week where you just were right at the price and it kept going above and below it. I can't dispute that with you. Because um, you're right, that is that is um, that could happen. Maybe it just uh, is a coincidence that it looks like this. But anyways, if we if we draw it out on log log scale, you can see that it essentially is in this in this channel. Um, here we're going to look at the running return on investment. So the one year, the two year, the three year, and the four year ROI. So this is basically if you had bought Bitcoin. Um, you know, here this, or if you had bought it a year ago, this is what your ROI would be at this point, um, and so on and so forth for each different uh, time denominated return on investment. And we're going to mainly look at, at the bottoms here to look at, um, uh, you know, lengthening cycles. So we're looking at the bottoms, not the tops. We're looking at the bottom of the one year ROI. And you can see that in, in this one here, from bottom to bottom, it was basically two and a half years. From the 2015 to 2019, it was four years. If we were to draw it out further, um, it's really hard to because we only have two data points, two and a half years and four years, and you cannot really come up with a trend with only two data points. Uh, you know, do we add another year and a half? Do we 
you know, find the ratio. Is it growing exponentially? Maybe the next one's going to be seven years or something or eight years. Um, we can't do anything uh, but just say, let's take a guess. Let's say five and a half years, but let's be cautious and say, you know, five and a half plus or minus a year. Um, and if, if that is the case, then that would put the next bottom of the one year ROI somewhere between, say, 2024 and 2026, somewhere around there. Now, how are we going to get there, though? So if this is our target, and and let's first of all, it's, it's kind of hard to see because we're plotting a lot of different curves. So let's just look at the one year ROI and note that we have um, this imaginary line uh, that hits these these peaks here. Uh, if we were to draw out a cycle projection for another market cycle, which I can guarantee you what I drew is wrong, um, but exactly how it plays out, I don't know, but I would expect it might come somewhere near this line at some point, might be 2023, somewhere around there, um, and come down in 2024. And, and some of you are going to say, well, that's where the having is. And this has been my point all along. That in, I don't think necessarily that this cycle is going to have two halvings, but I can, if this cycle doesn't, I would be almost assured that the next cycle is going to have two halvings in it. Because it's going to have the, the halving in 2024, which is hopefully going to help curb the, the bear market. So we, we're going to see that reduced macro level volatility of Bitcoin. And then the next bull market, or the next um, halving in 2028, will ultimately lead to another paradigm shift out in 2030, or, or thereabouts. So this is what I think. I think there's a lot of evidence to support that the lengthening cycle theory is correct. If you were to look at moving average derivatives and, and take the time derivative of a moving average and, and divide by price, you don't have to divide by price. I divided by price because when I made the original videos on this, I was comparing to other moving averages. So it was prudent to divide by price to actually get a better um, comparison. It doesn't change it qualitatively. It just changes the quantitative um, uh, uh, values basically. Uh, so if you were to look at this, you can see that in, in this cycle here, we spent around uh, two and a half years where the 50 week moving average was increasing, meaning it was above zero. So it was, um, uh, if it's above zero, that means the 50 week is going up and it did it for around two and a half years. In the second cycle, it was four years where it was increasing. Um, not, well, I shouldn't say exactly four years. It was, it was only increasing from, um, uh, uh, this point here. Um, so, anyways, uh, I mean, you can say it, it was increasing, I guess, but it just wasn't um, uh, uh, above zero. So basically, the the slope was moving upwards because it, it was um, uh, negative, and it be it was becoming less and less negative, and eventually it got it got to zero, and then was and then became positive. So where it started increasing, even from a negative position, um, it was two and a half years, and then this one was four years, so we would expect the next one to be um, longer and longer. And the reason I made this graph is because um, I think it's important to show that you might say, well, Ben, you're just looking at, at, at blow-off tops and uh, these mania phases that happen really quickly. Well, no, this is looking at a 50-week moving average, which is taking in prices about uh, you know, over the course of almost an entire year. So with that in mind, you know, I think you should, you should consider that this isn't just a, a coincidence. This is a longer term macro trend. And, and, you know, for all we know, we might even drop below zero um, in 2020 if prices remain suppressed and, and the 50 week moving average turns over and starts decreasing. Um, and, you know, that, that's a possibility, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I, I tend to think that these are going to be getting longer and longer. So these are the doubling bands. So if you look at the uh, at the chart, we have the Bitcoin price, a log scale, the ROI time, a log scale, and then time. Note the grid lines correspond to the primary y-axis, not the secondary y-axis. But it basically, if you if you look at any individual price, there's a yellow dot on that same you know line basically that corresponds to if you had bought at that price, how long would it have taken you taken you to double your money? And you can see that over here, it's very steep because the ROI time to see a 2x was very short. It did not take that long um, uh, to do it. And the cycles were very, you know, very short. Then they get longer and they get less steep. And the reason they're getting less steep is because um, the ROI is diminishing. So you can, or the, the time, we're seeing lengthening cycles. So that's why it's becoming less steep. But also the ROI is also um, ultimately diminishing. 
uh, and you can see that in, in terms of the, the bottom to the peak each cycle. Uh, we don't actually have it, I don't actually have it quantitatively shown on the graph, but the point is, is this cycle shows that each band that develops is, is flattening out and becoming more or less longer. So we would expect the next band to be even longer. The reason is because, it, you know, if you had bought, let's just say an example, and you could take this with any band basically. If you had bought at the peak in 2011, it would have taken you, you know, maybe six or 700 days to see a 2x on your investment, okay? If you had bought in 2013, it would have taken you over a thousand days. If you had bought in 2017, we would expect that it might take 14 or 1500 days, potentially, to see $40,000. So if that's the case, it also again suggests lengthening cycles. Um, now, you know, I, I think I think we should, and this basically the reason I had this was this was an old graph, and then I was just adding on um, the the new part of the of the chart. So one of the things I get a lot of comments about are people saying, well, you're not taking into account any fundamental factors, and I do. I, I make a lot of videos where I talk about it, but I just don't mix and match every video because I know a lot of people the the attention span for people to watch a longer video isn't that great. So I usually try to keep my videos between 10 and 20 minutes. This one is obviously longer because I want everyone to be able to look to one video to, to garnish my opinion on why we're seeing lengthening cycles without having to cherry pick 10 different videos and three different reports. So everything is, is basically in this video, or most everything. Um, so one of the arguments is, is well, Ben, what if, it, what if it was a four-year cycle and now it's not going to be a four-year cycle because of the black swan event of coronavirus, COVID-19, which is basically wrecking industries around the world. People are losing their jobs. I know people that are losing their jobs. I know people that have had to lay off other people because they don't have the money to pay them. A lot of companies only have one or two months of expenses on hand that they can continue operating before they just have to let people go. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of people that don't get their jobs back. And it's going to take a long time to, to, you know, to, to get back to the point of where we were, where we saw the unemployment rates at, at fairly low values. Just last week, the United States saw you know, over 3 million unemployment claims. We would, we would, we would expect this to keep going up. So um, I cannot dispute the fact that it's possible we would have been on a four-year cycle had the Black Swan event not happened. But if anything, it just gives more credence to the fact that it is a lengthening cycle. So maybe if you don't believe the math, Maybe now you say, well, okay, we're going, we might be going through a recession. Maybe this is going to cause it to be a lengthening cycle. I mean, that could be a consideration at a more fundamental level. And people do tend to liquidate high-risk assets during a recession. We've spoken about this for months in videos. If we, if we experience a recession, a global recession, people tend to liquidate high-risk assets, including what I would think would be, you know, even cryptocurrency, I think. Um, especially say like altcoins. I mean, you could make make a case for maybe Bitcoin, not as much, but I mean, in general, people are going to liquidate high risk assets because they need to look. They need to put food on the table. They need to make sure their bills are paid, and that's more important than speculating on a on a on an asset like Bitcoin, which might take years to see a return on. In fact, in the short term, you could see another fifty percent loss. <laughs> so it's reasonable to think that because of that reason. Um, you know, we're, we're going to continue to see a, a lengthening cycle because there just isn't going to be the confidence. Remember, Bitcoin was born out of the 2008 recession. And until, until now, it has not experienced a, a recession in, in traditional markets. And I ultimately think what I, what I envision as the future is, I, you know, I, I see obviously us going into a recession for some period of time. I see Bitcoin weathering that storm coming out on the other side a lot stronger, which I think is also going to be a catalyst again, um, among other things, for another another bull run a few years out, okay? Um, maybe around 2023, sometime around that time frame, I think that going through the storm now will only make the case for Bitcoin even stronger in the long run because then we can say, look, not only has Bitcoin weathered the storm uh, just in when, when traditional markets are going up, you know, Bitcoin was doing phenomenal, but it's also done well, or it, it maintained its value even when we were in a bear market in, in the global economy. So, um, uh, so consider that, I guess, as a, as a possibility. Um, and, and we've talked about why this is so bad and the exponential growth. You know, we fit this data to an exponential curve back in early March. And we said back then we would expect to see a million cases. I know this is everywhere else. So this basically is not including China, so everywhere but China. 
we said we would expect to see a million cases sometime by the end of March, maybe plus or minus a couple days. And we would see at the same growth rate, we would see 10 million cases by mid-April. Obviously, exponential growth does not last forever because if it did, it would only take a few months before everyone in the world is infected. Um, at some point, it will turn into logistic growth where we, where we bend over, um, the curve bends over, and it, and it starts to slow down a lot. So that's what we're trying to do. That's where the, you know, the bend the curve comes from. We want to get off this exponential growth and start to see it flatten out, which some, country, some countries have been able to do. There's still a lot of countries uh, that have not even come close to, to getting to that point. So as long as this continues happening, it's going to really strain the economy as businesses have to stay closed longer and longer. People are going to be losing their jobs more, and so it's going to take longer to rebuild the economy, to regain confidence, um, which could obviously affect the crypto markets. If you were to, you know, to, to look at the, the growth factor of coronavirus, you know, as long as we're above one, we're going to continue seeing that exponential growth because the number of cases is just a multiple of, of the previous day um, that's above one. We want to get it down to one or below one so that we can start seeing a reduction in the number of cases and where we can bend the curve. You can see we've mostly been between about 1.05 and, and 1.3. So I've also, you know, many of you know, I make a risk metric for different mar a metric, a risk metric for different markets, including traditional markets as well as Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. That's not the point of the video, so I'm not going to really talk about the, the color coding. But it goes back to the Great Depression for the S&P, and you can see all the way to present day, um, we have seen, you know, stock uh, crashing stock prices. We've lost we've lost 35 percent in the last month. And you can see how significant that is here. You can see how far we've fallen in, in such a short period of time. Uh, it's, a, it's, a quite it's a very significant drop. Obviously, this is going to cause people to, 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 to have second thoughts about investing in cryptocurrency. Um, now, you could make the case uh, that cryptocurrency and traditional markets are correlated, potentially. I'm not saying they are, but you can make the case on the macro scale because over the last 10 years, they've both been increasing, more or less, okay? I mean, obviously, Bitcoin has had bear markets. Even the S&P had, you know, a pullback in um, a couple years ago or so, a year and a half ago. But for the most part, they've both been increasing. But if you break it down and you look at Bitcoin bear markets and you look to see what the S&P was doing and the correlation, the correlation coefficient, they're not correlated in any way. In fact, each... Each, each of the three Bitcoin bear markets where we lost like 80 to 90 percent, uh, the correlation coefficient is very different from the next bear market to the next bear market. Um, some are inversely correlated, some are correlated, some have no correlation. So um, with that said, you know, at least we can say that I don't, you know, when Bitcoin is having a bear market, that doesn't necessarily mean that traditional markets are doing poorly. But we cannot definitively yet say, well, if there's a recession, what is Bitcoin going to do? This will provide us the evidence. We're going to figure out what Bitcoin's doing. We already saw a 50% drop, so you could make the case, well, that's probably caused by the black swan event of coronavirus. I know there are some people out there saying it's not. Um, it's, you know, we could obviously debate that for a long period of time. Um, but that is essentially, you know, these, these falling stock prices, I think, will not be necessarily good for, be necessarily that great for Bitcoin in the short term. Just because people are losing a lot of money, they don't have as much money to play with in the markets, especially really speculative markets like crypto. Um, but in the long term, I think Bitcoin's going to come out of the other side looking a lot stronger. So um, I also mentioned oil prices. You know, I think oil prices really do have a a, a good uh, indication of how the economy is doing, and and they're not that great right now because Saudi Arabia and Russia are basically having a a supply issue with each other. You know, Saudi Arabia at OPEC wanted uh, the number of oil bar barrels produced or, you know, let out into the into the economy to be capped and, and Russia necessarily wasn't agreeing. So then Saudi Arabia just said, well, you know what, we're just going to flood the market because we can still see a profit even at a few dollars on the barrel, whereas we know it's going to put a lot of other people out of business. So essentially what they can do is, you know, flood the market with crude oil, uh, get rid of a lot of competition, regain market share, and then start increasing prices again. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. I, I don't really know um, how it's going to turn out, obviously, in the next few months. But generally, if oil prices are tanking, it's not good for the rest of the economy because a ton of people are going to be losing their jobs. And, you know, 
Uh, that's just the, the nature of it. You could also say that oil prices are probably going down too because there's just a, a lower demand for, for travel. People aren't traveling because we're quarantined. Uh, we're not allowed to leave. We're not allowed to get on planes and, and go, you know, travel from country to country as much. Um, so take that into consideration. So I hope this video has been informative for everyone. I wanted to make one video that, you know, you could share with your friends on why, you know, the evidence for lengthening cycles let's all hope that we're on a four-year cycle. Let's all hope. Let's say, you know what, 2021, here we come. We're going to be cashing out in December at $100,000. Let's hope that's the case. But let's be prepared for the fact that it's likely not, based on the evidence, based on the math that I've laid out here, not only from market cycle tops, but from bottoms as well. Also, based on the black swan event that we're likely going into a recession, let's say there's a good chance that this is going to be a lengthening cycle and we're not going to see a peak in 2021. Um, we're probably not going to see $20,000 in 2020. Maybe we'll see it in 2021, if maybe late 2021. Um, but we're not going to be seeing it anytime soon. And I think the evidence supports that. So if you guys want to let me know what you think. Um, let me know in the comments below. If you want to discuss the charts more in depth, we do have a Telegram group of around 2,200, 2,300 people that you can find right here. I'm fairly active in that, so feel free to join. You can follow me on Twitter up here. So this is the link. These are all in the description below, by the way. There's a subreddit into the Cryptoverse. And I know these aren't the best times for you know people to be uh, spending um, extra money, but you know there's always the Patreon channel into the crypto or patreon.com slash into the Cryptoverse where you can get access to exclusive content and, and re reports that I've made. And, and I even made a video recently specifically for a report that's only for the patrons. So if you want to support the channel, check that out. Completely understand if this is not the right time. Um, but again, if anything, please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can at least follow along, even if you disagree with the lengthening cycles. Um, I would like to know in the comments below why you disagree um, specifically, what did I lay out that you saw a huge flaw with? Um, is are you gonna? Is the argument? Uh, you know, I'll I'll give you a couple arguments that I would expect to see, just so you know, I'm not like completely um, uh, just out of the loop on on what you might be thinking. Um, but if if this is what you're thinking, I, I get it. Uh, so I'm just gonna go back to the original. Um, let's go to this uh, market cap thing here. So if if you're Maybe what you'll say is, um, you know, this peak here and this was part of the same cycle. Maybe that's your argument. And that's fine if that's your argument. I still think there's a lot of evidence that suggests that that's not the case, And I, as I laid out in several charts, but you can make that argument. Another, some people might say, well, Bitcoin was created on January 3rd, 20, 2009. So if you say, you know, okay, 2008 to 2012-ish, four years, uh, or sorry, 2009, not sorry, 2009, to 2013, four years, 2013 to 2017, four years, which basically makes the case that this was um, one cycle. Um, and if you did say that, then the ROI on this to this would be 10 to the fourth. The ROI from here to here would be 10 squared. Um, so I'll let you do the math on that on what <laughs> maybe the next one will be, but um, clearly that would be decreasing very significantly because we're seeing two orders of magnitude drop from the first to the second. Uh, so if that if those are your arguments, fine. Let me know in the description below if there's something I missed. Um, let me know if you agree with some of the charts. If you if you think some of them make sense. If you think other ones are kind of dubious, I'd like to hear that. Um, but subscribe to the channel so that whatever you think, you know, we can we can continue talking about this, having these discussions over the next few years. We'll see who's right. Um, let's hope the four-year cycle theory is right. And, and that we can that we can cash in sooner rather than later. All right, guys, I think that'll wrap it up for this video. I, I would uh, uh, hope that you subscribe and I will see you guys next time.